Recently, there has been a lot of discussion on the internet about the complete solar eclipse that will occur in areas of the United States and Canada on April 8th. Some even say that this eclipse heralds the start of the Great Tribulation period, as predicted in scripture. In this video, we will examine these assertions and determine what God's Word actually says regarding the end times. Since always, I invite you to open your Bibles and follow along, since the Bible is our guide. According to news reports, a total solar eclipse will be seen on April 8th from regions of Mexico, the central United States, and Canada. During a total solar eclipse, the moon fully obscures the sun's brilliant face for a few minutes as seen from sites along the path of totality. This eclipse is significant for several reasons. First, it will be one of the longest total solar eclipses in recent history, lasting 4 minutes and 28 seconds. Second, the line of totality runs through or near several large cities and urban areas, allowing millions of people to easily watch it. The hoopla around this eclipse began when individuals discovered some intriguing biblical connections between the places in the line of totality. Let me clarify. The eclipse's path of totality will pass directly across or extremely close to seven American communities named Salem. Salem means peace in Hebrew. These seven cities are situated in Massachusetts, Oregon, New Hampshire, Virginia, Indiana, Illinois, and New Jersey. Surprisingly, on the map, these seven cities named Salem are roughly in a straight line from coast to coast. Some consider this as a divine sign from God, as the number seven frequently denotes fullness or perfection in Scripture. For example, in Revelation 1 verse 4, it states, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, Grace be unto you, and peace, from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. As if connecting the Salems wasn't exciting enough, the trajectories of the two longest solar eclipses in American history, seven years apart, converge at a 90 degrees angle over a location in southern Illinois, producing a perfect X. The two eclipses are the total solar eclipse of August 21st, 2017, and the impending eclipse of April 8th, 2024. According to NASA data, the aggregate duration of totality for these two eclipses is 7 minutes and 10 seconds. Again, theorists refer to the importance of the number 7 and the perfect X junction as divine indications that should not be overlooked. So what does all of this mean? Those who claim biblical significance for these eclipses claim that the 2017 eclipse represents God's warning of impending judgment, while the 2024 eclipse indicates that the judgment is imminent. Some believe that the eclipse on April 8th will herald the start of the biblically foretold Great Tribulation period. They cite various verses that link eclipses to biblical predictions and judgments, including Joel 2 verse 31, which states, The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. However, while eclipses are a warning of the end times, we must exercise extreme caution when assigning specific prophetic meaning to them beyond what Scripture directly states. In Matthew 24 verse 36, Jesus declared, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Another reason why theorists believe the 8th of April eclipse is a convincing prophetic sign is that its line of totality passes through seven American communities named Nineveh. Nineveh was the ancient capital of the terrible Assyrian Empire. In the Old Testament, God sent the prophet Jonah to warn Nineveh that they would face judgment if they did not repent. Jonah initially resisted and fled, but eventually submitted after being devoured by the giant fish. The Ninevites repented after hearing Jonah's message, and God spared the city from destruction. However, centuries later, Nahum and Zephaniah predicted that Nineveh would revert to its previous wicked ways. This time, God carried out the judgment he had postponed. In 612 BC, an invading army entirely destroyed Nineveh, precisely as God had predicted through Nahum. So, for theorists today, the fact that this eclipse ominously passes through modern locations named Nineveh is regarded as a sure heavenly portent of impending judgment. However, we must remember that no man knows the day or the hour, and a city's name has no prophetic power on its own. Yes, Nineveh experienced God's just judgment, but only after decades of evil, oppression, bloodshed, sorcery, whoredom, and idolatry, as recorded in the Bible. 
I think that God will spare any nation for the sake of its righteous remnant. While we don't know if America has passed that boundary, only the Lord knows the exact timing and method of his judgment. It will happen when it is right, not when we want it to. The Bible does state that there would be signs in the heavens prior to Christ's return, but the prophetic meaning of eclipses is obscure at best and blatantly misleading at worst when used to set dates or foretell end-of-the-world events. In Luke 21 verse 25, it states, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Could the eclipse on April 8th be one of the promised signs in the heavens leading up to Christ's return? Perhaps, but so could any other eclipse, comet, meteor shower, or unusual astronomical occurrence in history. We simply can't say for certain. Yes, the Bible predicts that there will be an increase in the frequency of earthquakes, wars, famines, pestilences, terrifying sights, and big signals from heaven in the end times. However, no one knows when the Son of Man will return. So where does this leave us? How should Christians respond to allegations that the eclipse heralds the apocalypse? First, we must continue to study scripture attentively so that we are not duped by erroneous claims and eschatological exaggerations, no matter how persuasive they appear on the surface. The most effective strategy to avoid fraud is to know the truth. Second, we should interpret global events and celestial signs through the prism of scripture, rather than the other way around. The Bible should inform our understanding of scientific phenomena and current events, not the other way around. Third, we must realize that only God knows the appropriate time and season. Our responsibility is to ensure that we are redeeming time wisely, fulfilling our calling, and reaching out to the lost, rather than speculating about dates. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 1 to 2 states unequivocally, But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you know completely that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. We don't need to know the times or seasons since Jesus will come as a thief in the night, when we least expect it. If we believe we know the day and hour, it is impossible for a robber to strike at night, right? So, instead of fighting over potential prophetic signs, let us focus on faithfully obeying the Great Commission until Christ returns. In Matthew 24 verses 42 to 44, Jesus encourages us to actively wait and watch for his return. Watch therefore, for you do not know when hour your Lord will come. But know this, if the goodman of the house had known what time the thief would arrive, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. As a result, be prepared. For the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect. Rather than obsessing over identifying eclipses and celestial events as harbingers of the tribulation, let us follow Christ's instructions to be ready, vigilant, and diligently working until his return. Jesus predicted battles and rumors of warfare before his return. Tragically, we see this being realized now. But Jesus added, When these signs appear, look up, because your redemption is near. Our focus should be on waiting for his return rather than hunting for indications here and there. Many people are afraid of Christ's return because they are unprepared. Let us pray for people who are suffering because of wars, rumors of wars, violence, and persecution. At the same time, while terrible, these experiences should deepen our trust because God's word is certain. Heaven and earth may pass away, but God's word is eternal. Nothing will go unfulfilled. So, how should we live knowing that Jesus is coming soon? As sojourners and pilgrims on earth, citizens of an unshakable kingdom, we are focused on God's upward call through Christ Jesus. Finishers of the race who want to hear, well done, faithful servant. Watchmen on the wall who understand the times and advise people to turn from sin and embrace Christ. As those who cleanse ourselves as he is pure, rejecting worldliness and walking in holiness, we will be courageous witnesses creating disciples of all nations before the end. This is how we must prepare our lamps and wait for our husband. I can't tell you for certain if this eclipse implies Jesus will return on April 9th, but I can tell you with absolute surety that Jesus is returning soon. I hope this video provided biblical clarity about the April 8th eclipse. May we cleave to God's truth instead of guesswork. If this message resonated with you, please share it with others. God bless all of you.